Okay, welcome back everybody. So, uh, just to start off with, I had some really bad audio problems. I ended up uh, moving my bench around a bit in the, and then got the audio turned way up and didn't realize it. So it was just entirely clipping through this whole thing. So I'm gonna quickly kind of cover what I was talking about here is I've got a new power transformer in the blue wires are my new high voltage. The black wires are my new heaters. And then there's a green wire that's the center tap of the heater. And the heaters, I did smoke the 100 ohm resistors. So those have been uh, removed. But since I have the center tap, I don't need them anymore to make that false center tap. Um, and then uh, effectively, I just had to kind of re reinstall the board, get everything connected. Uh, I also, I'm pointing here, I had to redo this as full wave bridge rectifier instead of as a, um, uh, as the, just a full wave rectification that I'd had before for the old transformer. I also have a separate bias winding here, the green and, and white wires that I'm pointing to also bring in and provide a bias. I did have to get uh, some help from the forums to kind of figure out what the right dropper resistor was here. And that's 27K that I tried at first and I had some others in case I needed to adjust from there, but that one actually turns out to have worked perfectly. So the general idea here now is gonna be, I'm gonna be bringing this up on a Variac um, because I want to uh, make sure that because I did smoke those resistors, I don't wanna make sure nothing else got ruined. I didn't think anything was, but just, just to be safe, I wanted to bring it up on the Variac. So uh, for the next little while, I'm really gonna be kind of going through the paces of starting at a lower voltage, um, showing you where those are at and, and where they go to. At first, I kind of start things up and I actually forgot to put the um, multimeter in, in range where you can see it. But effectively, I'll talk through the first little bit of that. And then from there, you'll be able to see the uh, voltages as I go as well. So uh, initially, I started at about 6 volts AC, uh, just kind of about the lowest setting I pretty much have on the on the uh, Variac. And I checked and, and it was giving me uh, about 27 volts DC coming in through here. Uh, and so that's a good sign that I was getting rectification. I was getting power through the transformer. Everything was looking good. Uh, and this is getting negative bias as well. And I effectively then realized, oh, you know, I probably should put this where you guys can see it. So from here on out, you'll now be able to see the voltages that I'm getting. And I'll just tell you, you know, as I go, what was going on. But this is just that process of slowly bringing it up. So, uh, so the next point I'm going to come to here is I'm going to bump it up to about 20 volts and see what it gives me as well. Uh, and so 20 volts in gives me about 88 volts DC out of the rectification. And then I have negative bias at the top end of about 9.5 volts. And then right where it would be going into the tubes, it's at about 7.6. Uh, again, this also, I'm not sure if I mentioned earlier, but this is unloaded. There are no tubes in. I just want to make sure the circuit itself is not smoking or burning anything else up before I risk tubes. Um, and uh, so we'll go from there. So I'm going to be bringing this back up again in a little bit here getting to higher voltages and just keep working my way up. So as you can see here now, as I bring this up, I've pushed it up to 40 volts uh, roughly, and I'm getting about 180 volts out the other side. And the uh, I kind of go through the different dropper points. That's the A, here's the B, here's C, here's D, E, and then I kind of jump over to the F side, kind of reaching over to the other side. I think I do make it visible here in a second. It's about 168 there. So, you know, again, unloaded. This is just to get a sense that I'm getting voltages across like I should, and it's not being dropped out anywhere. Uh, and then um, now I'm, I've raised it up a bit, uh, I'm ready to raise it up a bit more as we go. So um, the one of the biggest things I started looking at towards the end here was that as I was going up in voltage, I wanted to make sure I did not exceed the maximum voltage rating of the capacitors, which is 500 volts. So, you know, I was just trying to keep an eye on that as well. And so I kind of kept slowly ramping it up. Um, one of the things I do understand is that you can exceed the, that rating kind of at your peril. They aren't going to pop right at that voltage rating, but you ex you do shorten the life of the capacitor. Um, with the tubes fully loaded, um, I fully expect them to go under. I actually do show some uh, in the later videos exactly where I get. Uh, and it's very close. It's like 497 with the tubes conducting and running. And I think once you play them pretty extensively, as you're running the tubes and getting more warm, they'll probably conduct more and drop that even more. Uh, but I'm not too worried about it at that point because I'm under. But you know, anybody that's a little bit smarter on capacitors can please you know put comments below and explain what the status of that is or what danger I'm running running this at the very close to that 500 volt limit of the capacitor. Um, so, but as you see here, I'm continuing to ramp it up slowly but surely. I get it up to uh, very close to that 500 volt limit, and I wanted to see where it's at at AC. You'll see me switch to that in a second, and I'm also just validating that the bias comes in about where I want it as well. So, you know, I'm at 450 um, and, and um, I just kind of keep keep going and keep going until I get it as close as possible that I feel comfortable and I check that I've got bias, which was just enough for me to feel like, hey, I'm very close. I measure the AC voltage here in a second. I'm at about 116 volts, which is close to 120. I think at my house, it tends to run a little hotter, like 122, maybe 124 sometimes. 
uh, but I you know just wanted to get a sense of what it would be like and I figured with tubes in it will start conducting so we're going to kind of get through that point and, and figure that out in a moment here I'll see you'll see the 120 volts then we'll uh, effectively I'll cut us here and we'll go to the next video where we start talking about where that's at now several of these videos that I took because of the first failure here I tried to adjust the volume and I ended up unplugging it so I think I had some short audio for a period of time but then the batteries have been dead in it for a while I've been using USB power and I lose the audio on those as well so I'll be kind of recovering covering what I found with those as well uh, with this overdub so we'll see how that comes along as well all right everybody so I'm now plugged into the wall or going to plug into the wall here and we're going to test this again I've got tubes in, no light on yet. We should see no voltage yet. Okay, so we're gonna crank it on. Oh, that wasn't a good sign. I heard a hum and immediately fuse blew. Uh, which fuse was it? We'll unplug. I hope that I didn't have tubes that went out in the, in the explosive problem we had. I will have to check that, but. see that tube oops that because I smacked the microphone that tube or that fuse is good let's check this fuse yeah it blew up hmm so I might need to test my tubes and make sure I haven't done something wrong with them so I'm gonna take a short break here to look at the tubes and validate those and I'll be back so this is an interesting one. Um, I test all the tubes, they test okay, my tube tester, but you wanna see something interesting. If I touch this right now with, I'm checking, I was just deciding on, I blew the fuse immediately. On the power rail, if you have anything to earth, it can blow a fuse pretty quickly. So I kept checking around and the second I hit this one, I would beep and it would show about 200 ohms to ground. But when I pulled, I started pulling one power tube at a time and all of a sudden it went away with one. So I've got only the outer two in right now. I don't know if you can see it if I lift it, but I'm gonna lift it up enough to put this one back in so you guys can hear it. And you'll see this behavior I'm talking about. So I've got the tube in and it shows 240 ohms to ground. So there's a bad tube here. Uh, it's in a weird failure state I've not seen before, but if I pull that out, boom, it's gone. Um, but, you know, I'm gonna try a different tube in the socket out of theory to see if it's the tube or if it's the socket, something with the socket, but they're brand new sockets. So I don't think it should be the socket. Let's give this other tube a check. No, nothing. So I obviously don't want to leave a mismatched pair of tubes in there. So I'll just leave two and we'll be operating at 50 watts for now. Uh, I'm gonna have to replace my fuse and then I'll be back after the cut. We'll try it again. All right, we're gonna give this a try again with just the two tubes in. I'll need to make sure I put in my dummy load. Get my Guy back up here so you guys can see with me what I'm doing. And we'll try again. All right. Power in. Oh, look at that. We're coming up. So now we're going to check voltages here. Oh, that was on resistance mode. Get to volts mode. Well, that's weird. I'm, like, I'm at five. It should be dropping once it starts conducting. Maybe it's just taking a second for them to warm up. If not, this is not necessarily good for the power suit section here. Is it going to start conducting? Let me see if the tubes look like they're glowing. They are glowing. A negative 60 volts there. It really doesn't want to... That's kind of weird. That is kind of running hot. These are 500 volts rated and they're at 504. That's a little hot. That's 487 after the first one. Um, Although in, I think in, I'm thinking about this, so in, in fact, this may actually be more for a thousand volts rated because it's the 501, but it's two and <laughs> ooh, and that happens when you ground things like a dummy. Um, so I think that's actually safe here because this is actually 250 in 
I'm trying to think if that's parallel or series. I'll have to think that through, but it is sitting at a pretty high rating that's not necessarily good if that's, but I think that might be why these are done in parallel so that they can handle double the voltage rating. Um, if they're in, no, they should be in series where it would be this. Yeah, so that's not, that's in parallel. Um, but that is sitting a little high, but let's go ahead and shut it off for a minute and we're going to actually plug in a speaker and we'll give that a try now. Well, yeah, because I have to actually see if it outputs sound now. So we'll be back after the cut on that one. All right, so of course the part where I did lose the audio is here where I was about to actually play the guitar. So you'll see me doing a little bit of twiddling. <clears throat> Effectively what I ran into was that the plexi channel is the default with the way I've got this set up um, and it sounds pretty good. I've got a little bit of noise and hum, but it wasn't horrible and I kind of ended up leaving that alone for the short term until I had a chance to figure that out. But the, um, oh, I said that backwards actually. It's the, the Plexi channel is giving me no audio and the JCM 800 channel uh, is the one, you know, the 2204, 2203 is the one that's giving me actually audio. It's just a little bit noisy. So uh, I ended up kind of trying to play around with that a little bit, trying to figure out what could potentially be causing that noise. And uh, I kind of stopped out here for a bit to do some troubleshooting and figure out why it was doing that. Uh, and so after the break, I come back to that. Uh, but the problem, of course, will be that effectively I have no audio on the second clip as well. So uh, I spent a decent amount of time troubleshooting to try and figure out what was going wrong. And um, the uh, decided to leave the Plexi channel alone for a little bit because the... Um, uh, I mean, sorry, the 2204 channel alone for now, and troubleshoot was going with the Plexi channel. One of the weird things was, and as you'll see me, those two volume knobs I'm adjusting, one of them is the uh, the input um, one, and the other is input two. So the, this, the, the Plexi channel has both inputs coming in at once, but you can adjust the volume of the normal channel versus the bright channel independently. Uh, and so I was kind of playing around. I started seeing a weird interaction with the normal channel. It would kind of, with the volume at zero I could see you know uh, I could hear a little bit of sound as I turned it up and it all of a sudden start fading back out as it got up a ways the other channel seemed to be working but just really weak so there seemed to be something sapping some of the audio signal out and I wasn't sure what it was so I was kind of playing around trying to sort out what that was um, so what I ended up doing here shortly is I'm going to end up getting a, a multi or I mean a scope out and try to look at and see what exactly is causing that behavior um, but uh, you know effectively as you see me kind of twiddling a lot of the knobs I could not uh, initially determine the source of that and so we get to figuring that out here shortly. All right so I'm gonna do a little bit of troubleshooting. For some reason the amp uh, you I've got some previous videos I'm gonna have to kind of talk over. I didn't realize that my uh, audio recording device had uh, come unplugged and was the battery went dead so I had no audio. In the first video I will be overdubbing as well because I had uh, massively distorted audio. I somehow turned the volume way up on the input so Either way, we're going to look at troubleshooting now. The amp, um, I will have hopefully explained previously, the amp turns on. I get sound in the plexi channel. There's a little bit of hiss there. Uh, I need to try and sort that out. But I also get um, a really weak output on the plexi side. The JCM800 side has got some really good drive. I think I said that backwards a second ago. But the plexi side is really low volume. It's clean, but very low. So something seems to be dumping the signal. Also, when I engage that channel, it's the relay coming on it kind of adds some hum to it as well, which makes me wonder if, for example, maybe these leads here, uh, I haven't got it on right now, but maybe these leads that are part of the DC voltage are causing problems. So I've kind of raised them up a, a little bit, hopefully away. But uh, so, so effectively we're gonna turn it on, I've got it into a dummy load, and I'm just gonna trace the signal and see what levels we get. So this is just at the input before we go to the first triode. As you can see, that that's the level we're getting. So we're gonna start from there and we'll go from there. So here we go. All right. Let that kind of warm up for a second. And what I'm going to do is check it at the output, which should be right here. Once the tube starts conducting, that is. Although the volume, I think, might be... Oh, the volume is after that point. All right, so... So we're getting really weak output out of the first stage. And actually, if you look... Ooh, whoops. That was the volume. Okay, so... Uh, if I turn the volume to max... I actually do get it. Okay, cool. So that is where the volume is coming through. So I'm going to have to adjust this bit down. All right, so I get what looks like coming out of the other part of that first gain stage. I get, uh, what am I at? I'm about 10 volts. That's a good output from the first gain stage. Uh, I like that. So let's also compare that to the Plexi side, or the, the JCM800 side, which would be, let's see, where does that come out? I think that comes out right here, technically. That's about the same, yeah. So we're getting the same output from each gain stage. That's good. But then the um, 
there's mixed resistors here. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember where else this goes here, right? So, oh, interesting. So the second channel, on the other hand, seems to be dumping signal pretty badly and adjusting the volume doesn't seem to be adjusting that at all. So if we look, comparatively, the first triode, which is the first channel, the signal comes out very strong, but the second one, for some reason, comes out a bit weak. And I'm not sure why. We should be, in theory, roughly the same because they're fairly similar in the gain stages. One is the, you know, there's, there's, there's basically kind of like three channels here, but one of them is just the two old original plexi channels. You can adjust individual volume of each one. So the one channel comes out nice and strong, but the other one is coming out a bit weak. Now I'm wondering also if I switch the channels, oh, look at that. So switching the channels uh, does make that one come back a bit stronger. I don't know why, uh, but it's still a bit weak. But when I turn the actual relay on, which should basically be sending the signal through, it comes out as weak. Let me also check the, uh, again, the output on this side. So that doesn't seem to be affected by the switching. So something potentially in the switching is problematic, but I'm also wondering why I get such weak output out of the second channel. Um, so that is weird. So if I do look and I kind of jump ahead a ways and come to the, uh, Let's see, I'm trying to think here. All right, this is the... Okay, I'm actually getting pretty heavily distorted signal at the phase inverter and really high output. Um, if I turn the... Let's see, where is it? This is the master volume. Turn the master volume probably won't, won't matter much. But I don't want the master volume out because that's out of the output stage and I'm not worried about that right now. But at the phase inverter, that side, that's coming in really strong. Um, so this is the oh, so this is the Plexi channel. So or not the Plexi. This is the JCM eight hundred volume. So with that one, that's the um, the bright switch, which seems to kind of attenuate a bit there. And this is the sine wave, so it might be in the frequency range. That might be why. But it does get me some interesting looking values. But it, 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 it was, as I recall, it was not horrible, and that may be kind of typical of a plexi, as it gets driven really hard, I don't know. Um, but the switching, see that part I'm switching off the, let's see, let me turn the volume down. Yeah, the volume is down on those two, so switching it off should give me nothing. But if I switch these guys up to max, I get nothing there. Yeah, see, I get really weak output. It's there, but you can see it's actually lower. Let's go and dial that down so I can see. So see, I'm down to the two volt range now coming out of that side, um, which is odd because they're coming out of this side so coming out of the that one side that is a bit lower still, and maybe that's normal for that channel. So we're going from, oh, I have the volume down on that. No, I don't. Okay, that's kind of weird. The volume on this one is almost working backwards, but I'm pretty sure I haven't got that done backwards. I know I don't. Um, at any rate, um, I'm going to turn these both to max. There seems to be some weird interaction going on there. I wonder why. Hmm. Because if you look right now, I've got both volumes to max of these two channels that are the that side. But this side is nothing with the volume at max. But when I turn the volume down a little bit, it comes back. I wonder if this volume pot has problems. Because if you look, at max volume, it's off. But just down a little bit, it's there. And as I'm turning it downward, it's it's working inverted or something. That's really weird. Um, all right, so at any rate, that's enough mumbling for that. Let us, I'm trying to think. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I seem to be losing my signal there, but the other... So this channel, this is this was a little bit of red herring. This channel's strong, and coming over to this side, I think that's also this return is strong. But this channel seems to be almost doing the opposite of what I want. It's... When I turn it up to max volume, it's being kind of weird. Uh, let's touch the... All right, so I'm going to be a little jiggly here because I'm trying to handhold up at a steep angle, but I've sorted out all the problems. Um, first of all, this ground wire, or this wire you're going to see now is sitting on top. It used to be coming down here. It was putting, it was getting pressure from this ground bus that comes down and connects to grounding here. And it was just, I guess it had kind of crushed a bit of this insulation and was grounding it out. So this side was not getting any signal out. Uh, for some reason or other, uh, correctly. Whenever I would do the wrong kind of adjustment of the different pots and whatnot, it would just drop out, basically. The other problem was that the... Um, the relay was wired incorrectly. The relay was... I was thinking of it like you would normally do a regular dual pole, dual throw switch. You kind of cross them across the outer corners because the input and output are these middle parts. But in reality, for a relay like this, the common terminals are these first two. So that's what I needed to connect my outputs into. So this outputs to ground, and this one outputs to the next part here. These two are the ones that crisscross and come from either this output of this side, or this one kind of comes from the output of this one underneath it. You can't see it if it's coming from about right here. And then the final thing is right over... I'll just tilt a little bit more right here. So this was replaced. It used to be a small little... This style, um, I'll actually pull it up. It's one I had on a previous build because I couldn't seem to find this one, but I just found it kind of on accident recently. This style little chiclet kind of uh, lesser expensive type of uh, capacitor and touching it would give massive hiss on that channel. On the, the This would be the 20, 2204, you know, the JCM800 channel. So uh, I'm now going to turn it back on again. I will kind of adjust the camera here for a minute to come back at a little bit wider view. Turn it back on and let you hear a little bit of it and then I will do a, a, do a full demo later. But those were the major trouble points that I had. I did have to resolder the power supply connection on the foot switch for the um, power supply or the relay power supply, the twelve, the five volts, because it was causing some hum and buzz too. Uh, and every time I touched it, I realized it was causing buzz. So it's one of those things with chop sticking around is what kind of helped me find the problem. So let me go ahead and readjust the camera, and I'll be back in just a second. All right. So here's the overview of the amp. I'm going to fire it on. Of course, you're just looking at the guts of it, but you'll hear it coming up. And playing here shortly for just a second. Uh, like I said, you'll just, I'll just give you a quick demo of the two channels and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to do a full demo, but I'll just show you that it's working. Okay, so I have... Here I have a master volume, so I can turn that way down. That is the JCM 800 slash 2204 channel. This guitar is horribly tuned, but I'm just trying to show quickly the way the, it working. Then if I switch the relay on to switch to the Plexi channel. It works. Um, the the b bass, metal, and treble work. So it is working. The um, Plexi channel is very clean. Um, I can raise the max, the master volume up a bit. It has a very meaty kind of almost like a normal channel or a bassy channel in that first one, which is a lot like the basement. That's what it's taken from. So if I turn that down a bit though, I can get a more bright sound. So that's what's kind of nice about having these two volume controls. You kind of mix between that that basement bass channel kind of sound versus the uh, more bright channel sound. So I'll show you that real quick. So that's the bass channel all the way down. And if I bring it up, hopefully you can kind of feel that bass coming in. So I will get a tuned guitar and do a full demo for you guys later, but this is now a completed project. 
Hopefully you've enjoyed the ride coming along with me on this. Um, and please, if you have any questions, do hit the like, subscribe, uh, and comment below for any suggestions that you have. Thanks a lot. Bye.